If the germs of resistance are somehow communicable, well, we're thrilled to share today's example of an outbreak of conviction that we're tracing down to Arizona. Uh, as you'll see in today's video, it's making some viral news uh, because it holds both uh, maybe a legal surprise reassurance and some state-based strategy uh, that you'll find very interesting. Ali Velshi recently sat down with Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays, uh, which she said is lighting up the internet. Before we dive into that today, let's just take a quick second to see how we got here. Hi, I'm Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays. Let me start by thanking everyone for your patience as we conducted a thorough and professional investigation over the past 13 months into the fake elector scheme in our state. I understand for some of you today didn't come fast enough, and I know I'll be criticized by others for conducting this investigation at all. But as I have stated before and will say here again today, I will not allow American democracy to be undermined. It's too important. After the general election on November 3rd, 2020, the defendants and other unindicted co-conspirators raised false claims of widespread voter fraud in Arizona to pressure elections officials to change the outcome of a transparent, free, and fair democratic election. Those efforts ultimately failed when officials stood firm, followed their statutory duties, and officially certified Arizona's election on November 30th, 2020. We intend to prove these crimes were committed beyond a reasonable doubt. However, it must be remembered that the defendants are presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law and convicted by a jury of their peers. Though it is important to tell Arizonans about the grand jury indictments against these defendants, our office will continue its investigation into the efforts to illegally subvert the results of the 2020 presidential election. Please understand that any additional information provided by my office on this investigation will be limited and brief and based on the information currently outlined in the indictments as we move forward in prosecuting this case. We look forward to presenting our evidence in court and hope for a quick, fair, and deliberate resolution that will best serve the interests of justice. I ask that everyone respect this process. And that process seemed as though it might be jeopardized by Trump's victory. But uh, today's Twitter post, uh, ex post, attests and is, is reported by The Hill. Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays on Sunday pledged to move forward with the state's fake electors case against several allies of President-elect Trump, despite his recent victory in the 2024 election. The case, which is set to go to trial in January 2026, charges ex-White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, former Trump personal attorney Rudy Giuliani, and more than a dozen other defendants with alleged crimes related to a conspiracy to subvert the presidential election results in Arizona in 2020. In an interview with MSNBC's Ali Velshi, May said she would not be intimidated into dropping the case simply because Trump won the 2024 election. Okay, let's check that out as Connecticut Attorney General William Tong also joins Ali to outline the different modes of response uh, to different issues on the state level. Uh, and especially, listen to this unbelievable quote about Letitia James. Let's just jump into it right now. Uh, Attorney General Mays, nice to see you again, by the way. Um, talk to me about ways in which you do this, because we're dealing with tangible issues here, reproductive rights, civil rights, voting rights, environmental protections. What are the specific things that you can do in the face of a, an administration that is going to do something that at least half of Americans think um, are, are dangerous and, and affect them directly? Yeah, hi, Ali. It's great to be with you again. Um, what can we do? We we, we do uh, this by planning for it. And I, th I want everyone to know that the state AGs, Democratic AGs, have been planning uh, for this possibility for many months now. You know, uh, Project 2025 has been out there for more than a year. Obviously, we did not want this to come to pass, but that document, which they have telegraphed for the whole country, um, is chock full 
of unconstitutional provisions. Um, and so we are planning for it. As uh, my colleague, uh, A.G. Tong, just said, we stand ready to file the lawsuits that will be necessary to stop the unconstitutional and, frankly, illegal provisions that are in Project 2025. One of them, just to, to name one, would be the reinstatement uh, or the implementation of the Comstock mm -hmm. Act, which would essentially enact a, a nationwide abortion ban, even though states like mine just voted to ensconce abortion rights in our Constitution. Um, they also uh, have said they want to surveil women who are seeking reproductive care or who are traveling interstate for reproductive care. That, of course, is unacceptable to the vast majority of women and Americans. So we stand ready to file those lawsuits that A.G. Tong was talking about that they had to file in 2017, 2018. Um, they filed more than 100 lawsuits, and we had a, an 80 percent success rate. Hey, Jitong, I you are all people. You are the chief law enforcement officers in your in your state. You you are familiar with this. You get threats. All sorts of things happen. I was a little shocked uh, by Mike Davis, uh, a Trump lawyer who is reportedly being considered for the position of attorney general. Uh, he he named one of his first targets, someone you work with very closely, New York's attorney general, Tish James. Um, I'm going to read this, uh, and I've had many, I've thought about reading this many times, but I'm going to read this to my audience. Uh, quote, let me just say this to Big Tish James, the New York Attorney General. I dare you. I dare you to try to continue your lawfare against President Trump in his second term, because listen here, sweetheart, we're not messing around this time, and we will put your fat ass in prison for conspiracy against rights, and I promise you that. And I, I apologize to my, my viewers for having to read that, but, yeah. but it's actually important. I, I dare him to say that to her face. Yeah. There's nobody tush, tougher than Tish James. Yeah. I've served with her for six years, and it's despicable. It's disgusting. It puts her at risk. But Tish is one of our leaders, not just in, in, in New York or in our region, but in this country. We look to Tish. She is one of the key parts of this firewall, and she's going to be tougher than ever. And Chris Mays, you, I mean, you're used to these legal fights, but this is a, a different flavor altogether. Right. And by the way, you face this in Arizona with people who are not engaging in sort of normal level uh, legal or political fights, but go to these remarkable extremes. They're saying this stuff. And part of the effort in authoritarian governments is to try and make people fear so that they obey in advance. And that is the one thing our readers, our, our viewers need to know that you, Chris Mays, you, uh, uh, William Tong, will not do that. No, we won't do that. We won't be cowed. We won't be intimidated. And, you know, we, we never have. And, and, you know, this is a time for patriots to stand up for our Constitution, for us to remember that millions of Americans fought and sacrificed and died for our Constitution. Um, and, you know, just because one, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe that individual uh, would say those disgusting things about the top law enforcement officer of the state of New York. Um, just because they say those things doesn't mean that we're going to stand down. Ali, as you know, I have a fake electors case in Arizona. Yes. I have no intention of bringing that case up. I have no intention of dropping that case. A grand jury in the state of Arizona decided that these individuals who engaged in an attempt to overthrow our democracy in 2020 should be held accountable. So we won't be cowed. We won't be intimidated. And patriots across the country must stand up for our Constitution, for what is lawful. And we will do that. And what is where we can, we will obviously. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say your point there where it's lawful. And, I, and that's the point, right? If this person and I hope if this person shows up uh, for a Senate hearing to get confirmed for attorney general, this gets brought up that you can't just threaten people for wanting to pursue what they do. Uh, William, you you you. You do take the law into account when you challenge a case. If, if you don't have standing, if you don't have a legal argument, you won't do it. Of course, that's what the rule of law means. And, and I should also say that um, following Tish's lead and Chris's lead and together as state attorneys general, we're not just going to take it anymore. We're not going to be on defense like we were in Dobbs. We're on offense. You're the, the Mifepristone, the attempted right. Mifepristone ban. That is nothing if not an attempt to enact a nationwide ban on abortion. 
right? And we went on offense. We went into federal court. We filed our own lawsuit to protect access to mifepristone. So Democratic AGs are going on offense. And that's something Chris Mays, people, women are asking. You talked about surveillance. Um, there are women who are really scared about this because there are a lot of women who use apps um, in, in part of their efforts to to reproduce and understand when they're when they can get pregnant. There are a lot of women who who use a lot of technology. There are a lot of women who depend on mifepristone. There are a lot of women who depend on uh, abortion pill. I'm sorry, contraceptive pills by mail that the Comstock Act and some Republicans have said they will target as well. There are people who have real fears about what should they be doing? Should they be stockpiling? Should they be finding providers in Mexico or Canada? These are real issues to people. These are real issues to people um, and they're real issues for for states. Uh, and, and these are all things uh, and reasons that we will stand up for the rule of law, for the r- states' rights, frankly, right? The rights of states to protect reproductive rights. Um, and yes, women are afraid. I can't tell you how many women have come up to me and hugged me or who have been in tears about this and who are fearful. You know, we also have, uh, you know, DACA recipients, dreamers who are afraid. I'll tell you, we are not going to uh, put up with any attempts to undermine our dreamers in this country and and deport dreamers or eliminate DACA. Um, These are the kinds of lines in the sand that I think that we have to draw going forward. And you, of course, had a lot of experience with that in Arizona, where the federal government has tried to enforce or try to use local and state authorities to enforce their immigration uh, desires. And that hasn't uh, that hasn't worked. Thanks to both of you. We appreciate it. Attorney General William Tong of Connecticut and Attorney General Chris Mays of Arizona. While the state of our lives in the future may well fall to the state, eh, when you see people like Chris Mays, William Tong, and especially the ever vigilant Ali Velshi, well, it steals the soul for what lies ahead.